It is pretty unbelievable when you hear that about 90% of the Fortune 500 firms that existed in 1995 were gone by 2019, and these numbers will only increase after this year. In a 2015 survey of Fortune 500 CEOs, they named the rapid pace of technological change as their biggest challenge, and 94% of them said their companies would change more in the next five years than the previous five. However, no one could have predicted the global crisis that 2020 would bring, and for some companies that were already barely scraping by, the pandemic and the subsequent lockdown seem to have sealed their fate. While some may hold on for a few more years, others might not be around to see the start of 2021. So here are 10 Fortune 500 companies that are dying out. When the first Cheesecake Factory opened in California in the 1970s, it didn't take long until it became a huge success, with restaurants opening across the country and eventually across the globe. With so many of their restaurants being located in malls and shopping outlets, the Cheesecake Factory became a popular hangout spot in the 80s and 90s, but is now facing the tough future that most stores and restaurants that are closely associated with malls are facing. On top of that, the chain is not exactly known for offering healthy food, and the shift towards a more healthy conscious way of living has led to further problems for this chain. The Cheesecake Factory has recently seen a dramatic decrease in sales and revenue and has started closing restaurants all across the country, which might just be the beginning of the end. Like so many companies this year, Hertz Global Holdings, the parent company of the international rental car company, has faced some tough challenges in recent months, and for this company, they could turn out to be more than they can handle because things weren't looking too great even before the pandemic practically halted all travel. Hertz was already burdened with a massive debt as a result of how things were handled. Like most bigger car rental services, the company normally doesn't buy the 500,000 cars they rent out, but instead they lease them and also the locations in places such as airports or hotels where customers can pick them up. Add to that the cost of fleet maintenance, vehicle depreciation, and the fact that Hertz did what many companies do, namely using their own fleet to leverage credit in order to maintain it, and you can see where things might have gone wrong. While they tried to pay off the debt with the profit coming from the operation, the company was just barely coming up with payments in recent years due to tough competition from other rental services such as Uber and Lyft. Global financial instability has further further increased their debt so that it recently reached $24 billion, and finally led the company to file for bankruptcy protection in the US in May. There are tons of clothing stores, so it is not hard to believe that some of them don't make it. But around a decade ago, no one would have really believed it could hit a company as big and as popular as Abercrombie & Fitch. However, their unwillingness to dress people of all shapes and sizes turned out to be the company's downfall as their stocks took a huge hit after then-CEO Mike Jeffries stated that he didn't want fat people or uncool kids wearing his clothes. Theories about the chain only targeting richer and popular kids had been floating around for a while and were confirmed in 2006, when Jeffries originally made the comments before they resurfaced again in 2013 and caused an even bigger blow to the company. Customers started boycotting the brand and Abercrombie and & Fitch had to close around 60 stores across the US in 2015. But things didn't seem to look up. With their reputation ruined, their sales suffered, their stocks dropped and the company closed another 40 stores last year. Abercrombie & Fitch have already dropped out of the Fortune 500, currently holding rank number 678 and it seems only a matter of time until they completely disappear. J.C. Penney has been a fixture of American malls for decades, but the 118-year-old history of this department store operator might soon come to an end. Ever since stirring up controversy with One Million Moms in 2004, when they decided to feature openly gay comedian Ellen DeGeneres as their spokesperson, the company has been in a downward spiral, and advertising same-sex marriage soon after saw sales drop by 25%. Although J.C. Penney closed 90 stores a few years ago and saw a slight increase in sales from 2015 to 2016, it just wasn't enough in the long run. The enormous burden of their debt as well as online competition and the 2020 pandemic caused JCPenney to file for bankruptcy and the company only avoided liquidation by recently reaching an agreement to sell its retail business to the mall operators Simon Property Group and Brookfield Property Partners. 
Not too long ago, it seemed like there was a Starbucks popping up at every corner, but the coffee giant's popularity has taken a hit in recent years as people started turning towards local businesses again. Like other major coffee chains, Starbucks has seen a decline in demand because people are no longer willing to pay a small fortune for a cup of joe that they can get better and cheaper at a smaller coffee shop around the corner. In the 2010s, the company started closing around 50 stores per year before 2019 came along and they shut the doors of a whopping 100 50 stores. Starbucks still operates more than 30,000 stores in 80 markets today, but their growth has slowed down almost to a halt, so it's only a matter of time before we may have to say goodbye to this chain too. Right Aid has been in dire straits for a while now, and it seems pretty unlikely that the drugstore company will manage to avoid bankruptcy. After their stock price was destroyed within just a few weeks, the company tried to sell out to Walgreens Boots Alliance, but the buyout was unfortunately blocked by the Trade Commission, so they only managed to sell a few of their stores in the end. While that did help to cut the massive amount of debt, the recession as a result of the ongoing global pandemic might be the kick off the cliff that the company has been trying to fight against. The new CEO has has been a driving force behind the slight comeback that even led to Rite Aid stock rising again for a few months. But the company faces some really tough competition such as CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Costco, Kroger, and Amazon. And it might just prove to be more than Rite Aid can handle. Despite recent trends leading people to pursue a healthier lifestyle, GNC stores have faced the same dilemma that many other stores and malls have had to deal with in recent years. Because they mainly sell their health and nutrition related products in locations in malls, the end of the popularity of malls has also led to a decline in sales for GNC. In fact, 1,100 GNC stores are located in malls and the company is expected to close around 900 of their stores by the end of this year, making for a pretty bleak outlook on the company future. GNC has tried to turn things around with a new store initiative as well as several partnerships with brands like Dick's Sporting Goods and Hudson News Outlets, but with the company not really having made much profit over the last five years, it might be too late to save them. It might come as a surprise, but McDonald's isn't as popular as it once was as people are leaning more and more towards healthier eating habits. More than ever, people care about what they actually eat and documentaries about some of the stuff that McDonald's apparently uses as ingredients in their food have not exactly helped the fast food giant convince its customers to keep coming back. While the company stuck to its guns when first facing criticism stating it wouldn't give in to the latest health food trends and start offering kale or Greek yogurt, the Golden Arches soon had to cave and include some healthier choices in their menu. Still, more and more McDonald's stores are closing every year, while the remaining ones are being remodeled to appear more like a trendy food chain. However, the majority of the growth that McDonald's has experienced in recent years has been due to cutting costs rather than gaining customers again, so we might not see the Golden Arches around for that much longer. Video games, consumer electronics, and wireless services retailer GameStop operates more than 5,500 stores across 14 countries, but it appears their days are counted unless they find a way to bounce back. Last year, the company made a loss of $470.9 million, causing them to drop down 118 ranks on the Fortune 500 list to number 464. However, their downfall has already been happening gradually over the past decade, brought about by mobile gaming, digital downloads and bad reputation. The ongoing health crisis and subsequent lockdown caused further problems and the company is currently facing bankruptcy. GameStop will likely see a further decline in sales in the upcoming months and it seems nearly unavoidable for the company to disappear. Foot Locker has been around since the mid-1970s, selling athletic apparel through brick-and-mortar stores as well as through its websites. The company was pretty popular in the mid-1990s, but the 2000s didn't start off too well. Things started looking up again between 2010 and 2017, but recent years have seen the downfall continue. Foot Locker has tried not to let the death of the malls seal its fate and attempted to turn around decreasing sales numbers by moving out of malls and making investments in moving products more quickly as well is finding a way to get online customers into their stores and vice versa. Unfortunately, the athletic shoe and accessories retailer reported a wider than expected fiscal first quarter loss for 2020 and the pandemic resulted in store closures, leaving the online stores as the company's only sources of business for now.
Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.